Hello everyone, this is Jono, and welcome to a Duelist video. Now, I have not released any videos for two weeks. Yeah, apologize for that. Basically, I was traveling and then I got sick. I'm still ill, but I am well enough to do a video, so as a result, I've got some tissues next to me, and I will obviously mute my microphone if I sneeze or anything. That's why I sound a bit muffled. But anyway, so... In this particular video, we're going to be going over Lionar, one of the five factions from Duelist, and I'm going to start with a basic deck that you can build within probably about three days of starting to a finished product, which I built in about three weeks. Uh, I did spend some money on the game, though, and after the basic version, there's a highly budget version which can actually get to S rank. I know because I got very close to S rank and I could have got S rank if I just kept going with that but I started upgrading it. As you do when you get cards you start upgrading the deck. And then a sort of halfway finished budget deck. And then at the end we'll look at the finished product which is what I'm currently running. So anyway, first things first, uh, let's look at the strengths of Lionar. So Lionar is a faction that has two main strengths. The first one is Provoke. They have some rather large Provoke minions like Silver Guard Knight and also Ironcliff Guardian. And the second thing that they really benefit from is Healing and AoE, which I'm putting together because they kind of work together. So on the healing side of things, you've got things like Sundrop Elixir for pure burst, and you've got healing benefiting cards like Sunriser, which will come up later. But then this also pairs into AoE through Sunriser, and you've got things like Tempest to keep board control. Because it damages both heroes, then the healing actually benefits you more than you'd expect. So anyway, keeping that in mind, let's start with the basic deck. So the basic deck is something that you can build just with basics and commons. In fact, I think about two-thirds of this deck is basic, give or take. Yeah, I think about two-thirds of this deck is basic, and you can throw this together within a couple of days of, even, of starting playing, to be honest. So, it's a good starting point. So, let's just go through card by card. So, first thing first, you've got Sundrop Elixir, is one of the few spells in this deck, uh, but it just is raw heal. It doesn't sound too good, but... An, until you start playing the game a bit more, you start realizing how good healing actually is. Especially considering there's a lot of burst combos, which means healing yourself back up is incredibly valuable. On top of the fact that card advantage isn't as much of an issue since you draw two cards per turn anyway. So Sundrop Elixir, if you keep replacing them, they'll come back later when you actually need them and they don't tend to uh, bother you in the early game. Now besides that, the other spells we're running are Martyrdom. Basic removal spell, which all versions of every Lionar deck ever runs three of, pretty much. Uh, drawback is pretty significant, but the games are long anyway with Lionar in general, so it doesn't come up much. The tempo gain is what really matters. It's difficult to get back from a tempo loss against the Lionar deck, so multiple martyrdoms will often just win the game. Two mana, destroy is four drop, five drop, six drop. It's just too much to come back from. Uh, Some Bloom. Now, Sunbloom is AoE Silence that you can use anywhere on the board. Now, there is a replacement to this card before you get them, which is Ephemeral Shroud, which is actually what I was using for a couple of days before I got my Sunbloom, since it means that you can uh, craft some of the other commons first. Uh, you can just run two Ephemerals and then replace them with Sunblooms over time. But Dispel is incredibly useful as you deal with just really obnoxious things like Mechazor and... All of the Silithars from Magmar, and just a lot of things you have to deal with, since a lot of creatures have very powerful Dying Wish effects, and just persistent effects in general. Now, two more spells in the deck. We've got Divine Bond. Divine Bond is the sole reason why Lionar creatures are feared, because Divine Bond can easily deal 10 damage out of nowhere in a lot of cases. In fact, its damage potential goes up as you upgrade the deck, strangely enough. So, there are three Divine Bond in this deck. Over time, you want to reduce it to two as the uh, you upgrade the deck. However, sticking with three for now, because it's a very, very powerful buff effect, you can use it just for trading or just to finish out the game, since if you use it on some of the high-end creatures, like Storm Metal Golem, that's 16 damage immediately. So, very, very powerful buff. Um, it is 
situational because it's buff, so as you upgrade the deck, you will reduce it to two. Last spell on the deck is Tempest, one of the most powerful cards in the entire game. Three mana, deal three damage to all enemies and minions. Well, not enemies. Uh, deal three damage to all minions in general, so it does wipe the board. However, a lot of your stuff is high HP, so it'll even live through it, and it just lets you deal with massive amounts of creatures that normally would spell the end of the game. Now, it is a bit like Plasma Storm in uh, Magmar. Functions differently, but this is a little bit of burn as well. It's bad burn. It only does three for three mana. It's really bad burn. But sometimes it does come up where multiple Tempests will be enough to close out the game. So onto the creatures we're starting with. We've got Healing Mystic. This will be in every version of the deck. Just two mana, two, three is absolutely brilliant stats. And you get to restore health. Usually this goes in the general, but it can go on your minions as well. Primus Fist. Another guy that will stick around for a bit. So Primus Fist is the sort of 7 through 9 of a 2 drop in this particular type of deck. And when you have a more budget deck, you don't have as good of a late game. So you need to power up your early game a little bit more. So we're running the extra 2 drops in the more budget versions. It is a surprisingly good 2 drop. You can also run Jaxi instead of this. But... I don't know, Primus Fist always seemed better than Jaxi and Lionar particularly. In other decks, I think Jaxi is stronger, but in Lionar, Primus Fist always seemed to be slightly better. So I I would suggest running Primus Fist over Jaxi in the more budget versions of Lionar. On to the best two drop in the game, in my opinion, Windblade Adept. Windblade Adept, it has an effect which gives it plus two attack. In reality, it's just a two mana four three, which is nuts. Uh, just make sure that you keep next to your hero because zeal will often screw you over if you're not used to dealing with it because you'll move your general and then suddenly you don't get the zeal effect. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just a two mana four three, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, one repulsor beast. This is just because, well, you don't have that many ways of dealing with the big heavy hitting legendaries or epics with this particular deck besides martyrdom so one repulsor beast helps it's not a particularly good card in this deck but when you're running on just basics and commons you need to add something silver guard knight uh, another card that will come up in every single version basically a three mana three five provoke which is just nuts and should never be underestimated and is one of the best minions in the entire game in my opinion Hailstone Golem, vanilla 4-6 for 4, solid stats, comes down relatively early, kind of useful. Suntide Maiden, basically a Hailstone Golem that heals every turn. The one attack isn't that relevant, but the healing effect every turn is just disgusting in a lot of situations. Now it is worse than Golem in one situation, which is against Magmar, because it gets Plasma Stormed a lot. But, let's see if I just, let me just check I even got the name right there. It is Plasma Storm, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason I was just thinking, like, yep, I think it's called Plasma Storm, but I may have forgotten. Uh, but anyway, so the three attacks is a bit of a liability there, but not much outside of that. So it's just a golem that heals itself. Uh, Bright Moss Golem, another vanilla creature, good with Divine Bond, just for keeping board position, kind of like Hailstone Golem. It's worse than Hailstone Golem, but you have to run something at a higher end when you're on a budget. Dancing Swords, now this sticks around for a while because it's quite a powerful card so I'll talk about it now. Basically dealing three damage in front of it is remarkably useful. Now you do have to be careful with positioning because in some cases you won't actually be able to play it in front of a creature and then it doesn't deal the damage. It also deals damage to your stuff. So be careful about that. You can kill your own things with Dancing Blades. It's very awkward. Uh, so you do have to watch that with Dancing Blades sometimes. It doesn't come up. Like you're never forced to do it pretty much. It's very low chance you'll ever be forced to damage your own minion. However, it is something you can do by accident. So yeah, watch for that. But dealing 3 damage, 4-6, tempo swing is, is pretty large when you play this thing. Last card in this particular deck is the Storm Metal Golem, 8-8 eight, eight for 6. Again, just a big golem put on the end of the curve. It's good with Divine Bond, hard to deal with for a lot of decks, and it's just a worthy inclusion. So that's the basic deck that you have to start with. Now, next we're going on to the, the budget budget, which I know that the first budget is misspelled. That's deliberate. Uh, basically, I... When I first made a Lionheart deck, I called it Budget Budget because it was a budget version of a deck I was trying to build. 
and I misspelled budget, so it's kind of a thing now for me. But anyway, so I'm just going to go over the differences between decks, since I don't want to repeat myself a whole bunch. So the main differences between this deck and the budget version is six new additions. Three Emerald Rejuvenator, which is one of the most powerful creatures in the entire game. Four mana, four, four. Restore four is an absolute nail in the coffin against aggro decks. Once you start doing multiples of these, getting like four, 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 four isn't that bad. It's not as, I mean, you lose two stats from a Hailstone Golem, basically. In exchange, you get four life, which is just crazy. Considering the fact that you can, worst case scenario, use your hero to make up for the two damage and lose four life, then they're basically a parody. But if your opponent isn't playing something vanilla stats wise and is playing something that probably is a 3 6 as its main uh, its main stats or 4 4, things like that, then the Rejuvenator trades and gives you the HP. So it's just an amazing tempo swing against aggro decks and is. Really, really useful on top of the fact that you're playing so much other healing, it just builds up over time and it becomes insurmountable. Now, the other major addition to this particular version is the Iron Cliff Guardian, also known as Songhai's Worst Nightmare. So basically, Songhai can only kill this with Pando Seal, or whatever it's called. Anyway, it turns it into the 0 2 Panda. Besides that, if they don't have a seal for one of the Guardians, they instantly lose, because it's very hard to get through 10 life, and even if they do, they run out of resources and can't kill you. So Ironcliff Guardian is just disgusting against aggro decks. Now, it's okay against uh, the Abyssian aggro decks as well. At lower ranks, it'll often get Dark Transformation, which kind of sucks, but then it's just 5 mana for 5 mana. But at higher ranks, no one plays Dark Transformation, which means once you start getting into rank 10 or 5, it just doesn't happen, and it starts tanking large amounts of damage from the Abyssian player. So basically, all aggro decks are bad against this thing. It's only bad against Magmar, and that's just because of Plasma Storm, and also Natural Selection deal with Ironcliff Guardian very, very well. However, against every other matchup, it's useful. You can airdrop it, against ranged creatures which and blast creatures which works well against Vitruvian although you do have to watch about Entropic Decay and Dominate Will in the late game and against Vanar if you ever run into any Vanar players they basically have to bounce it or transform it and even then it's not that much of a blowout on their part. Now the other thing this card does is single-handedly win Lionel Mirrors because dealing with Lion Cliff Guardian as a Lionel player is close to impossible. So basically, Lionar Mirrors, might as well talk about this now, Lionar Mirrors turn into a play taunt, play taunt, hit each other in the face over and over and over again. That's basically Lionar Mirrors. And you use Martyrdom to get key tempo. The problem is that you can use Martyrdom to get key tempo against an Ironcliff Guardian, sure, you gain 3 mana and tempo, but they also gain 10 life, which stops you from abusing the tempo. So it's just not a good exchange. And if you can't kill the Iron Cliff Guardian, they Divine Bond it and deal 13 damage and kill you. That's actually one of the stupidest ways of killing someone. That does happen from time to time. Drop an Iron Cliff Guardian on their face. They can't deal with it. Double Divine Bond, kill them. This does happen. It's very rare, but it is a way of dealing, you know, 23 damage. Uh, it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it's, it's a recipe for free wins. Now, what we've replaced is taken out one hailstone golem we've taken out the uh the two eight eights that i keep forgetting the names of and besides that i can't remember what else was actually removed here oh yeah the uh, the five drop golems as well so just shaving down on the golems and increasing with higher rarity cards now this particular version of Lionar is capable of getting S rank, especially towards the end of the season. I think any player that got S rank with a tier two deck normally, uh, I say that because like tier one decks kind of can carry themselves a little bit. But uh, any S rank player that has got uh, to S rank with a tier two deck can probably get a budget deck to uh, to S rank. And it's, it's definitely possible, you just have to know the deck well enough and play it well enough. So, especially towards the end of the season, you can definitely get S rank with this particular list. It would be fairly difficult, but it's definitely possible. So, moving on to the 
just budget list. Now this is once you've got a bit more of a collection, you've got some epics, no legendaries, but you have few epics and you're looking to move up the food chain, so to speak. So the there are three additions to this particular list, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there are three additions. We've got Arclight Sentinel. Three drop lets you get massive tempo boosts and actually lets you push some damage sometimes. Now, Arclight Sentinel is a trade-off between Arclight Sentinel and Lasting Judgment. Which one you pick is down to you. Lasting Judgment is a spell, costs less, is more effective at removal, but it does mean you're a bit minion light sometimes. And that was the problem I was really having. I was running uh, three Lasting Judgment at one point in the budget version, or two Lasting Judgment, I can't remember. And I was planning on running three, but then I switched them out for Arclight Sentinels, and I just prefer it, because uh, I prefer being proactive as opposed to reactive a lot of the time. But anyway, so you can run Lasting Judgment if you want to run a bit more of a controlling uh, playstyle, or you can run Arclight Sentinel if you want to be a bit more proactive. This is my personal preference. Uh, the two four stats are also pretty useful, although it does have less reach since you can't play it anywhere, like Lasting Judgment, and it also has a little bit less hitting power as far as removal goes. However, you can also argue that it's better on your own stuff because it doesn't straight up kill things like Wimblade Adept. You can just hit for six with Wimblade instead of uh, killing it. So anyway, besides that, we've removed one Divine Bond and also the uh, three Primus Fists. And we've removed the Golems entirely. And we've included in some Holy Immolations and Sunrisers. Now, in the final version, you want three Holy Immolation. However, it is a bit clunky because you have too many spells. So I've suggested going two Holy Immolation as far as crafting, uh, crafting priorities. You want two Holy Immolation, then two Sunriser in that order. So, Holy Immolation is basically one of the most insane swing cards in the entire game. You get to deal 4 damage to everything, which also applies to the enemy general, so it is burn as well, and you heal something. Now, the healing is less relevant. Its real use is attack with, say, I don't know, attack with a Sun Tide Maiden, and then heal it. That's a bit of a bad example. Uh, attack, because it heals itself anyway. Attack with an Iron Cliff Guardian, and then heal it for and then you get to deal three extra basically for free. That's about the only use of the healing. It's not that relevant. You'd think it'd be good with Sunriser since Sunriser deals AOE whenever anything's healed, but in reality it's actually difficult to play these two together since the Sunriser isn't usually damaged. But anyway, the four damage AOE is enough on its own to play and is ludicrously powerful. Now, I would say it's less powerful than Tempest. I think some people would shoot me for this, but I actually do think it's slightly less powerful than Tempest, just because Tempest can be more easily played as an AoE, whereas Holy Immolation requires some setup. Now, Sunriser is basically, well, I mean, the first reason why I've said Craft 2 of these for the third Holy Immolation is, well, minions versus spells, you need to keep your minion count relatively high, you can't just replace them with a whole bunch of uh, four drop spells. But the other reason is Sunriser is pretty much the only way of dealing with equipment in this in Dire faction. So this does come up a lot once you start getting to rank 5, closing in on S rank, which is probably where the average player with this kind of deck, if you built it up from scratch, would be heading. Uh, if you're improving over time, you can get to S rank easily with this kind of list, if you're improving, keep in mind. And you'll start running into legendaries, particularly two decks. The first of all is, well, Lionar, who have Arclight Regalia which is completely unstoppable in the uh, Lionar Mirror, apart from Sunriser, basically, because Sunriser deals a bunch of damage in one turn in increments, which means you can start blowing through the Arclight Regalia, since it does block the first two damage. And the other deck is, well, it's a Songhai Artifact deck, and basically you play a whole bunch of artifacts and then you start teleporting around with a whole bunch of mobility spells and minions and you can't catch them and you need to be able to attack them a few times from range and if you have a sunriser then you can move within two tiles of him play sunriser next to him and heal a whole bunch and you get rid of all of his artifacts and heal all the damage you dealt to you so sunriser is kind of necessary in that particular case so that's why I like going for the 2-2 split when you're just uh, crafting your first few epics. Now, besides that, 
I think so the uh, these four come out from the the Primus Fists and also from the Divine Bond and then the Arc Light Sentinels come out from the Golems the last two of the Golems all right on to the finished product now this is my version however there are a couple different versions you can run and I'll go over a few substitutions uh, once I've gone through my particular version so this particular version is running three Sunbloom this is something which I actually only went up to three Sunbloom once I finished the deck entirely and the reason for this was because I was starting to have a lot of issues in longer games since this deck does run slower than the uh, previous versions so you need more silence as the game goes longer so I'm running the third Sunbloom so besides that still got the the same core early game and the main difference is I've got a third Holy Immolation because it's just a ridiculously powerful spell and as the games go longer you need more of them. Two Arclight Regalia because Arclight Regalia is one of the most powerful Lionar cards you can get your hands on. It is legendary so it's the first time we see it and it prevents two damage and puts your attack up to four which means you can play it and attack the enemy general. You don't lose any uh, durability on it which is an incredibly powerful effect and also means that it blocks an insane amount of damage. This will probably block about 8 damage in one game since you can keep attacking enemy uh, minions with 2 or less attack and you don't lose any charges whatsoever. So it basically heals you, it gives you a damage buff, it's just crazy. And as I mentioned earlier, it gives you a massive edge in the Lionel Mirror if you get it and the only answer really is Sunriser or lucky attacks with some of the bigger stuff. Now, the other two legendaries in the deck, I've got one Spellbinder, one Red Sinja. Now, this is where the tacking comes in, because if we go up to... Actually, fast way of doing this. If we go up to the end here, basically, there's a whole variety of legendaries you can run in this place. So, the idea is you want two legendaries that give you a variety of threats late game, and actually provide you with some, uh, some heavy hitting capability when you need to close out the game. So the ones I've tried are Pandora. Pandora I actually think is quite powerful. The reason I'm not running it is because there's a lot of magma running around and Plasma Storm destroys it since it makes three threes and also has three attack. Uh, the wolves it can summon all have different abilities. There's Provoke, Flying, Ranged, Frenzy and Celerity, all of which are insane. Uh, Provoke probably being the weakest and the strongest I would say is probably Ranged. Ranged is a bit silly on a 3-3. Three, three. So Pandora is very, very powerful, but it's weak to Magmar, which is why I'm not currently running it. Now, the two cards I am running currently are Spellbinder, because Spellbinder is just nuts, and is actually often a two-of in uh, Lionar decks, instead of running the tech 7-drop. And basically, 7-9 with a tempo boost. It's a golem with better stats, because a 7-9 is better than 8-8, eight, eight, arguably. And also, it slows your opponent's spells down, which actually helps against combo and aggro decks. Then you got Sinja, is what I'm running as my tech 7-drop currently. There's a couple other options, like, as I said, Pandora is the other major one. And there's also... Um, I've even seen some people running Stormblade, which is 7-7 seven, seven for 6, Provoke, you get to move around more, and Grandmaster Zero against some combo decks. But I'm running Sinja. The main reason for it is because it absolutely annihilates Magmar decks to an astonishing efficiency. I was not expecting how good this would be against Magmar decks, but the main reason for it is because it kills the majority of Magmar's threats. The only thing it can't kill immediately once you uh, attack their enemy general is basically Silithar Eldar. But if you go Tempest, basically you can play Sinja and then Tempest. Your hero takes damage and you'll kill the, uh, the Silithar Eldar immediately. And then you can just attack the egg. So it actually does work against Eldar if you combo it with Tempest. Or also if you combo it with something like Holy Immolation and Attack. So 
It's very, very good against Magma. It doesn't die to any of their removal besides Metamorphosis, basically. And usually it'll be not the only thing on the board. It'll, it'll probably be one of about two minions on the board. You want to make sure you play the other one away so it's not vulnerable to natural selection. And then they have some serious issues dealing with it. So that's how Red Singer works. Especially in Lionar because there's often a lot of removal being spent like uh, natural selection on Ironclad Guardians. Uh, there's also only two Ironcliff Guardians in the finished product for me because Magmar is very popular and Ironcliff Guardian is not very good against Magmar. So anyway, now as far as replacements go, I already talked a little bit about the, the heavy hitters late game. But if we talk a little bit about the rest of the substitutions, I have seen, I already talked about Lasting Judgment, but I have seen Light Chaser as a substitution 2-drop, mostly over Healing Mystic. But, I don't know, I think you really do need the healing effect. I tried Light Chaser briefly as a two-of. I only have two, but I didn't want to craft the third one, even though I could. Uh, I tried it, and it just didn't work for me. I really didn't like it, so I didn't, uh, didn't follow through with it. Now, besides that, uh, I have tried Decimate. It's not as bad as people think. It... If you ever want to try Decimate, it does do some things for you that no other card does. It also is really bad in some situations. If you ever want to try Decimate, basically it's good versus Vitruvian because they have Jax, True Sight, and Decimate completely destroys Jax for free, basically, and you lose nothing. And it also destroys half of the other Blast minions that are not going to be near their hero. However, if you ever want to play Decimate, play as a one-off. I personally don't like it anymore. I did try it for a bit and it won me a few games because no one plays around it. And as soon as you play the first one, they play around it for the rest of the game. And you don't have any others in your deck, which is kind of funny. So, yeah. If you ever want to try it, try it as a one-off. But I'm not a big fan of it in the current metagame. Besides that, there's actually a variation of Lionar midrange that is called Healinar, which runs Circle of Life and also a third Sunriser. Personally, I think it's a bit clunky, but... I mean, it's if the metagame is all song high, then yeah, you just run as much healing as you possibly can. I'll uh, just deal with the aggro. But uh, it is definitely a variation you can run. It's a bit more spell heavy and has a little bit less damage on the on the top end. So anyway, on to some of the uh, some of the neutral substitutions. Now, I did actually try Azorhorn Shaman for a bit. I cut it eventually for uh, at the time it was Primus Fist actually, but. This was when I hadn't finished the deck out. It was surprisingly useful. I did end up cutting it because it was a little bit slow, but it's it's worth trying if you, if you have a couple and you want to try it out. Because it's... I'm not really sure how to evaluate it. It's an okay card. It just didn't quite make it through. Now, the other two drop that I have tried out a bit and was surprisingly good was uh, Rock Pulverizer. Again, it's a card that I think it's a little bit too... Not slow, because it's only a 2-drop, but it doesn't have much actual damage potential. It is good with Divine Bond. You end up with a 5-4 uh, a Provoke uh, with Divine Bond, so that does work. But it does lower your damage potential in the early game a little bit, because it only has one attack. And honestly, 1-4 is not very good currently, since most 2-drops are not utility ones with 1 HP. There aren't many 1-drops running around, and a lot of things that have 1 HP are ranged anyway, so Pulverizer doesn't really interact with them very well. Loremaster. Now, this is a card that actually sees play in a lot of different versions. I have tried it briefly. I think it's the kind of thing which you need 3 or 2 of, and then you need to play it with Healinar. I think that's that's its place. I don't think it works in Lionar normally. I think you need to play it with a full healing based deck. So that you can combo it with Sundrop Elixirs. And also with Sunrisers. And if you want to do that then that's fine. But I don't think it works with normal Lionar. Now a trick you can actually use with Lore Master. Is it says any of the last spells played. So you can use it on your opponent's spells as well. Which actually does come up and is quite brutal. But its main primary use is basically comboing with, well, Tempest on 9 mana, which you can do to deal 6 AoE. But primarily it's Sundrop Elixir and uh, Sunriser, which is a powerful combo. But as I said, you need to really be running 2 or even 3 of them and go for a full healing build. Now, I think that's about it as far as substitutions go, if I just look through this quickly. 
yeah, the card pool is fairly small right now, which is expected. Ah, Twilight Sorcerer. Twilight Sorcerer is actually something I was running for a bit since I just had one. I ended up cutting it not because it was bad, but because I actually was, like, overdrawing too much. Because the deck is pretty slow. Um, it only really plays one thing per turn, maybe two. So you often end up in a state where you have permanently six cards in hand. So Twilight Sorcerer actually stops you from getting more options and often like it triggers when you play it and then you don't draw any new cards for the turn. So that's actually the reason I cut Twilight Sorcerer. I don't know. I think that if you're running... If you're running a deck Twilight Sorcerer works with, you pretty much just want to run Lore Master. They have a very similar effect, but the body is not as, as necessary since you have a whole bunch of other things you can run in Liner specifically, so it's it's just not that necessary. And I think I think that's it. Yep, that's everything. So anyway, that's my extensive rundown of going from basic from basic Lionar to a finished build. Now, this is not an end-all be-all of playing Lionar because it's just going over the decks themselves. Duelist is a very, very complicated game, especially the playing. I'll probably do a uh, separate video going over several different situations with Lionar and talking about all the little tricks you can do in-game and how to play the deck properly. But I felt as if the the subject of just going through each deck and how they upgrade is is enough. Now I am going to put these all of these decks in the description so that you can go from basic to finished and have them all in separate links. Thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. If you want to ask any questions about Lionor, Asnaus, Njoro, signing off.